In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, for your goodness. We thank you for thy presence. We thank you, Father, for bringing us much closer to you, Father, when we truly and sincerely need you. Thank you for thy blood that made the glue, that made the bond between us to be permanent. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and believe. Amen. Children of God, the word of the Lord is true. The word of the Lord will always come home with a reason and within a season for a people. The word of the Lord, when we are talking about the bond, the bond of God and man, the bond of God and man came about. Genesis chapter 1 verses 27, it says, God created man in his own image and likeness. Male and female, God created them to manage the creation, to dominate the world. This God is bringing home the bond between himself as God and man to impart the power of creation. When he tells man, I have created, but intentionally God left part of the creation for the naming of the creation, telling man, you shall give names to everything I created. And man came to give names. That to date, those are the names that creation, every creation, living and non-living, owns to date. What a bond that God brings and elevates the creation he made in his image and likeness. The bond that man needs more is the bond between man and God. Elijah and Elisha were servants of God, led by Elijah himself in 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 2. He says, Elijah said to Elisha, tarry here. For the Lord has sent me to bear help. From verses 2. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you live, I will never leave you. I will go with you. The Bible continued to say, Then the two gentlemen left up to Bethel. Reaching Bethel, Elijah tells Elisha, Tarry here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. Reaching that point, Elisha says, As the Lord lives, and as you live, I will never leave you. What was the reason behind Elisha insisting to Elijah, I will never leave you? Elisha needed something more. Elisha was focused on a particular gain, the double portion blessing that he could not let go. Child of God, what is it that you need in life? What is it that you've always been looking for? What is it that you are looking for in life? It is yet to come. Though it looks coming closer, but still far. Elisha did not leave the gap between himself and Elijah. This is the call for you and me today. What is the gap between you and God the provider? What is the gap between you and God the defender in your problem? What is the gap between you and God the defender of the helpless, of the weak? He is the one who feeds what is the gap between you in your sick bed and God the healer? This is the message. As the Lord lives and as you leave Elijah, I will not leave you. 
This was the goal that Elisha is bringing home to our understanding as we read the scripture. And so they went up to Jericho, reaching Jericho. Again, Elijah is telling Elisha, tarry here because the Lord has sent me over the river Jordan. As the Lord lives, and as you leave Elijah, I will never leave you. What is it that is coming in between you and the person whom you adore, the one and only one whom your life is dependent? Child of God, they went reaching River Jordan. Elijah removed the mantle, spat the waters, and the water separated, making a dry land across the river. And they crossed over. Child of God, immediately they reached over the Jordan. Elijah asked, tell me what you want before I am taken away. Child of God, because of the consistency of Elisha, he walked with Elijah to the point when now Elijah could not speak of any. He had reached the moment when he was going home. And the next was, tell me what you need. And Elijah, Elijah said, I only need the two fold of your power, double portion of your power. Child of God, Elijah said you ask a very hard thing, but when you see me go, the Lord shall give you what you ask for. Child of God, what do you need in life? Elisha walked with Elijah and witnessed what Elijah did. But he decided to ask for the double of what Elijah had. Meaning, Elisha asked more than what Elijah could give. Whenever you follow me, man, what right do you need from a fellow man? You ask for what that man has. You ask for that what that woman has. In the, the riches of this world, you walk into the financial help. You are walking onto the highway of economic health. You are walking onto the path of educational need. You walk into the path of a social need. And you ask a fellow man of what you think that fellow man can provide. Child of God. I learn one thing, and I see the spirit, the gift, the God that Elisha had. I am not going to ask for what you have, Elijah. I am not going to ask what I know you are capable of giving. I want to ask more, because I know the one who gave you can give me more. I need a double portion of your spirit. Child of God, this is the reason why when Elijah went, and Elisha remained. The power that the servant of God Elisha had, what he did, made tremor unto the land, made tremor to the face and the life of mankind. What are you looking for, child of God? You've always looked for a job because you are looking for a lesser job. You've only looked for money because you, you, you categorize and coin your money lesser than the person you are asking for assistance. Are you asking the human support for the financial gain? Are you asking for human support in economic gain? Are you asking human support when it comes to social gain? Child of God, the Bible is bringing it home. Ask a double portion of whatever you see around and about you. And surely in truth and in spirit prayer, the Lord God of heaven will give you what you have asked for. Solomon, son of David, asked for the knowledge to live, children of God, and the Lord added in him the wisdom that surpasses human understanding. He could understand and hear the words of the birds in the air. The, 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 the ants as they were talking onto the ground, the cattle in the bush and domestic, and no man 
had ever had the knowledge and wisdom that son of David Solomon had. What is it that you are looking for, child of God? Call out the double portion as you walk with the Lord, walking with God and asking, believe me, only that God of heaven is on your side, casting out every tetramount spiritual delusion within your mind and within your life. Child of God, Elisha had a bond with Elijah because he knew what he was looking for. What are you looking for, child of God? The bond that existed between Naomi and Ruth was a bond that no any other woman or man would come to put asunder. Hence, Ruth came to begat a child with Boaz because of the bond she had with Naomi, her mother-in-law. Wherever you go, I will go. Wherever you die, I will die. The, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. The bond between Ruth and Naomi could never be separated. You are going home. The name Naomi is already washed away. The only thing that remains is Mara because of the ill, because of the bitterness life that you have experienced. But Ruth could never leave part of Mara to go away. With all that bitterness, the marriage is standing because you believe in God. Child of God, the bond you have with your God is the same bond that this God is going to make it stand between you and your husband, you and your wife you and your children. The thunder coming in between to divert and discard the children of one home is because of the selfishness. Child of God, what bond, what type of glue, what are you using, what is gelling your relationship with your people? The bond between a husband and wife is the bond that God through Jesus Christ has been brought to commemorate Church of God and Christ. Child of God. Genesis chapter 2 verses 24 says, A man shall leave his mother and father. A old lady, girls shall also leave their mother and father. And they shall come together and the two shall become one. And nothing will ever come in between. The bond. What type of bond do you have? with your God? What type of bond do you have with your God? If it were not that bond that existed between God and Christ the Son, Father and the Son, then our deliverance would have not come to pass. Child of God, the challenge you have today is because you have a weaker bond with the maker. You have a weaker bond with the protector. You have a weaker bond with the provider. We must come out of that weakling territory. Remove the weakling gum and the glue between you and your maker. Child of God, you need to stand strong in your challenges. That is the only way that God calling upon his name, believing and praying, casting all your burdens and challenges unto the cross. God shall come to stand in between you and your challenges and never again shall you weep. Never again shall your tears roll your cheek. Never again shall you come to wonder because the bond between you and God is not to be made in heaven, but it is you and me to make our bond, to make amends with the heaven, to speak with the God, to rely on God, to pray in truth and spirit that the Lord shall restore us one more time. May the good Lord of heaven continue to hold us firm, to teach us, to open up our intellect, to give us a momentous time in our life to pray in truth and in spirit 
to forgive those who have the, uh, offended us, to make unity among us brethren, to bring home those who are lost, and to pray for that sick, to restore the lost, to feed the hungry. Let us make smaller heaven while we live on earth. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you, Lord, for it is be only because of your presence. It is because of your death on the cross. It is because of your blood that was shed on the cross that we today have power, have the authority, have the majestic right to speak your word with authority. Thank you, Lord. For when you come to pray, you came to pray, Father, you are set, sweat turned into blood. Already you, the blood within you, Son of God, was ready for the atonement of our sins, even before you went to the cross. It was already, your blood was already out of your body to redeem mankind. That showed the connection, the strong bond that God had with mankind. The blood was already out of you even before the crucifixion. No wonder it was never by the, by, by the torture of man on you that we got remission of our sin, that we got delivered, but by the passion that God had to us through your blood. Thank you, Lord, for thy love Thank you for the protection. Thank you for everything you have done. May thy will and wish continue to lead the way as thy spirit teaches us and guide us, telling us when to turn left and when to turn right. May thy will and desire teach us and rebound us, remake us and reshape us one more time to follow your pathway of righteousness so that our bond may continue to be stronger and stronger. In Jesus Christ, let me pray and believe. Amen. Child of God, may the bond between God and you, between God and myself, between God and our community, between God and our churches, between God and our, our neighborhood, be rekindled, be retightened, be renewed in Jesus' name. Thank God for his presence. Thanks for the bond that he has promised to give us in Jesus' name.